What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. New York Jets have concluded their season on a six-game losing streak. Uh, They do not score a touchdown in their final three games. Hard to picture a more devastating way to close out a season. Uh, You know, you kind of thought midway through the year at six and three, seven and four, you know, finally the team's getting over the hump. All those years of rebuilding, you know, it's finally starting to turn. It's finally starting to flip. Fortunes are changing. Not the same, uh, not the same old Jets. And then they pretty much have a prototypical same old Jets type of finish to their season. And you go into the offseason now with so many questions. I don't look at anybody as far as head coach, GM, quarterback. I, I don't I don't look at anyone or anything as being solidified on this team right now. You know, the the one extreme of you gotta fire everybody in clean house. I think that's crazy the the same way that I think, oh, Joe Douglas is definitely the guy. Sal is definitely the guy. LaFleur is definitely the guy. Um, For the sake of continuity, you have to run it back. I think that's silly also. Um, I I think there's a lot of questions about each of these, uh, about each of these guys as individuals. You know, the GM, uh, a lot of questions about his his free agent signings, about his draft picks the first two years. This past draft, I, I think definitely saved him. Quarterback. Clearly, I think the biggest issue with the season and why the Jets aren't a playoff team, you put a better quarterback in there, I think the Jets are definitely in the playoffs. Um, So now, you know, are you making a a premium investment at quarterback? Are you trusting a different voice, different coordinator to get through to Zach and trying to run it back with him? You know, so, so many questions there. And then obviously the head coach, you could tout progress. You could tout, you know, at times maybe holding players accountable. Um, but at the same time, you know, for, for all the receipt talk and everything else, we're going to see Buffalo again. The team choked. They collapsed when it really mattered. They, they lost six in a row. You know, we can credit the defense for not giving up a lot of points, but I, I still think they got exposed for a good portion of the second half of the season uh, in terms of uh, quarterbacks getting outside the pocket, long sustained drives. The, the running defense has not been good today in particular. A lot of arm tackles, a lot of big holes. Um, time of possession, often losing that. And again, offense, clearly the, the biggest issue, right? You know, the, the offense is what held the team back this year. The Patriot game, not being able to score more than three points, blowing that one the way they did, not being able to convert on the one yard line against the Vikings, the fumble and the drops by Berrios against the Bills. You know, there, there, there's so many moments that you can look at. Um, But ultimately, it's hard to blame the defense for as much as I think that they kind of came back down to earth in the second half. It's still hard to blame them as being the reason that the Jets collapsed and why they didn't make the playoffs. To me, the biggest reason is the quarterback. If you want to say LaFleur in there as well, uh, I think that's more than fair with the way the offense has played the last three weeks. Not being able to score a touchdown is pathetic. The scripted plays have been awful. The, the usage of some players like Elijah Moore you can point to and, you know, quite, uh, kind of question why he's regressed the way he has. Um, you know, as far as not having anybody to develop a quarterback, it, it, it's more than fair at this point to question if the Jets have the pieces to, you know, actually develop a quarterback or to, to resurrect Zach's career. You know, I, I listened to Trevor Lawrence last night. We were talking about it during the stream. He was in exactly the same place mentally that Zach was, you know, six or seven weeks ago. And, you know, he kind of looked himself in the mirror and said, I I need to play better. I'm holding my team back. And, you know, he even admitted that his confidence was kind of shot, too. And, you know, for for all of that, he got himself back on track. Now, is that coaching that got him back or is he just talented enough to, you know, to figure it out? Is whatever the coaching staff trying to do with Zach, is is it just not clicking with him? Is he not figuring it out on his own? Is there more that, you know, they could be doing to help him? And what I kind of think, and again, we were talking about this on the stream as well, that it seems that Sal is a little bit more uh, loyal because of his experience as a coordinator and how Shanahan gave him some time during some early struggles. It seems that Sal probably wants continuity, wants to run it back with LaFleur, and he thinks that ultimately time is going to make everything click, where I think that Douglas and possibly even Woody Johnson look at it a little bit differently and say, hey, this is a number two overall pick that is completely lost right now. You don't have a history of, you know, developing a quarterback. We need to completely change things here and do everything possible to see if this kid can do it with somebody else, with a different system, with a different voice in his head, uh, something like that. So uh, I think quarterback is clearly the the thing that's going to drive this entire offseason. 
And, you know, whether or not you bring LaFleur back, I, I think he ultimately might be the one that, that takes the fall for the collapse. Offense has been the biggest issue. Again, not that I, I think the defense has struggled because I do think that they have. Um, but as far as points given up, they, they've given you a chance to win most of these games. So when they do that, it, it's hard to blame the defense. They give up some yards. They give up, you know, some long drives. Uh, and they've had their moments this year where they've struggled. But, you know, for the most part, they've given you a chance to win games. And if you had a better quarterback, you're a playoff team. So does that fall on the floor? Does it just fall on, hey, get a new quarterback in here and with the same pieces, we should be back in the playoffs. Not to mention, you know, guys like AVT and Brees Hall hopefully coming back. Um, but then you look at, again, so many other decisions that I think you got to make this offseason, you know, aside from the coaching staff and things like that, the Jets don't have a ton of money. So if you are investing a, a decent amount of money in a, a premium quarterback like Carr or Jimmy G or, or somebody like that, you know, who, who are you cutting to free up money to address other areas on the team because McGovern's a free agent. Who knows if uh, Dwayne Brown's coming back? Uh, is, is there any kind of trust in Becton uh, to potentially play one of those tackle spots? Do you trust Max Mitchell out there? Um, you know, is Corey Davis coming back? If not, you probably have to uh, at least sign one receiver, if not draft one. Uh, again, fairly high in the draft. Is there trust in Elijah Moore? You know, are you getting uh, enough bang for your buck at tight end right now, paying almost twenty million for Conklin and Uzama? Uh, is Carl Lawson worth fifteen million for single digit sacks? Uh, JFM, you know, he's making over $10 million. Is he coming back? Uh, you know, your your linebackers are free agents. Quincy Williams, Quan Alexander, how much are they worth? Uh, you need at least one safety to replace Joyner. Uh, Whitehead, he's on the final year of his contract. I don't think he's really met expectations this year. Um, so just a lot of questions. You know, Berrios, is he worth the $7 million cap hit or whatever he's making? So the Jets have a, a lot of decisions to make. And obviously, Quinnen Williams, he's played... Uh, He's played out of his mind this year, you know, for, for most of the season, good enough that he deserves that, that premium contract. But, you know, if the reports are true that he's looking for Aaron Donald money and Aaron Donald's making close to $30 million a year, actually over $30 million a year, um, you know, how much is Quinn going to make? He's a, a, a very young player. Do you give him five or six years at, you know, $25 million a year? And, and if you do that, does that take away from your ability to, you know, potentially, you know, keep a JFM on the roster to keep Carl Lawson? Do you try to, you know, renegotiate with Carl Lawson and extend him for another year or two if that's possible? Do you trust Jermaine Johnson to come back as uh, as a starter? Do you need uh, Bryce Huff? Uh, you know, so many questions right now on this team, and I, I don't really know where they go from here. You know, I'm, I'm questioning the, the success and, and what they did early on because, you know, the reports, not, not really reports, the, the, the way a lot of people were trying to downplay the Jets' success was that, yeah, it was against backup quarterbacks, and, you know, it, it was against teams that weren't very good, even though initially that was supposed to be the, the tough part of the schedule. Um, but now looking back, it's like, yeah, you know, the, the Bears didn't have Justin Fields. Uh, the Dolphins, you know, they still had their third-string quarterback, the same quarterback that they had out there today, uh, that first game where, you know, the Jets put up 40 points at home. Um, you know, the, the Packers, they were struggling early on. The Broncos have been terrible all year. The Brown game, they probably shouldn't have won. The Steeler game, you know, Kenny Pickett was driving all over them, probably shouldn't have won that one either, you know, got the uh, two scores late. So it, it, it really brings into question all that success that they had early on and what it really meant and, you know, where the team really is now losing six straight to close out the year and what the expectations should be going into next year. You know, when does Brees Hall come back? Is he the same player early in the year? Does he take a, you know, a few weeks midseason to get into form? Who's your quarterback? What system are you running? You know, is it a playoff mandate for the head coach? What do you do in the draft? How do you address the O-line? You know, where do you play AVT? Is he your tackle? Is he your guard? A lot of questions going into this offseason. Uh, so who knows what to think. Apologies for my voice. I, I've been struggling the last few days with a cold. So I uh, appreciate everybody that, that joined us all season long. Uh, it's been a blast to at least have games into December that meant something. So I guess, you know, if we're looking to tout progress, that's it. Um, that's about all I got. This, this was a frustrating year the way it finished. You know, they, they got your hopes up and then they shot them down. So hate to say same old Jets, but it definitely feels like that. 
another offseason. Tons of questions about the head coach, coaching staff, quarterback, GM, draft, free agency, all of it. So we'll be here. Talk to you guys soon. Have a good night.